The National Institute of Health estimates there are over 30 million diabetics in the United States. We have more morbidly obese people in the United States. So people who are morbidly obese, diabetic, and have a long-standing peripheral neuropathy can have a minor trauma, and if the bone fails and fractures and you don't have protective sensation because of the neuropathy, you can develop a malignant form of a fracture called Charcot arthropathy. It's a condition where we develop a fracture, there's deformity, and in heavy people with poor quality bone, the bone will deform and patients can get secondary infection, which eventually may require an amputation. You don't realize you got it, and the foot gets infected, and you just feel, I felt like I had the flu. So I'm treating the flu and blah, 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 and everything. And you just get to where you can't hardly move. And you go to the hospital and they say, oh, you got a raging infection. It started out as a uh, blister in my, in my foot. I'm a heavy equipment operator, so I'm out in the field all the time. One day, I got a stone in my boot. Didn't know it. I took my sock off. My whole shoe was full of blood. I walked on a stone all day long and didn't know it was in my boot. The patients who get a Charcot foot have peripheral neuropathy. That means they don't have normal feeling, they don't have protective sensation. They will misstep and they'll have what's called a repetitive injury and the bone will break. And it was so bad that I was walking on the side so when I would take a step, before I put the foot down, I'd kick it against my leg to get it to go flat so I could step on it. His foot was pretty much 90 degrees to what it should be and he was walking on the absolute outside of his foot. When they walk on the side of their foot, whether it be the inner side or the outer side, there's now start to weight bear or to walk on tissues that aren't designed to take weight bearing. And what happens is the tissues fail, they develop wounds, and the wounds communicate with the bone, the bone gets infected. His foot began to roll, so in the beginning we didn't realize what was happening. And once it rolled, um, he was stuck in a wheelchair and he, at 400 pounds, not everyone can push him around, not everyone can get him in and out of the house. Um, it made things a little more challenging for everyone. And then we see another doctor and he said, well, if you got any hopes of saving that foot, you got to go see Dr. Pinzer. There became more and more interest trying to find a way to treat them surgically to correct their deformities with having minimal risk. So I go see him and he looks it over and he checks it out and he says, well, you got two choices. I can either cut it off or I can try my fix it -er to fix it. One of them showed me, it's like a halo that goes around your leg with pins into it. He says, I can try this. He says, I'm going to tell you the shape you're in. He says, you'll be my most challenging patient ever. When Dr. Pinzer said that he would be able to do his best to save it, we thought that was the best stress relief that we could have because being in a wheelchair, pushing him around. We knew if it was amputated, that was probably the rest of our lives. We had to correct a 90 degree deformity to get his foot flat on the ground so he could bear weight on it. And I had 19 pins screwed into my leg. Putting it in a fix -er, we basically knew we had half a chance of him being able to walk again. We've looked at our results here at Loyola where we've done over 560 of these types of surgeries and Better than 90% of them are able to walk reasonably well uh, with commercially available diabetic shoes. Just getting out of the wheelchair was a big change. It made a, all the difference in the world. Even just a little ways on a scooter saved a lot of pressure on a wheelchair and the person pushing it. It requires multiple disciplines uh, to safely operate on this complex group of patients. And those are the kinds of things you can only do in a medical center where people work together to care for the patient. I'm extremely grateful to him, but I, I, I mean, how do you put it in words? You say thanks. How can you thank a guy like that who can work a miracle? I mean, it's literally a miracle what he did. It, it really has changed all around for everybody. Thank you for giving us all our life back. I love the concept of that we also treat the human spirit. It, uh, it guides what I do every day. The next step is to live a fuller, richer life. To be able to do things that I haven't been able to do for years, like fishing and hunting and, you know. When we go places, not to have to sit in the car 
while every everybody else goes. It's it, it's gonna be different.